So I've always been talking about how robotic process automation can make our life so much easier by creating robots that will take over our screen and do the work for us and liberate us to do other things during our day jobs. So it only seems fair to talk about the other side of the equation and talk about the hardships that we have once we start doing RPA full time. So I have been in the industry for more than six years now, and I have ran into so many issues that I couldn't solve easily. So I will share the recurring themes of my own personal experience. So if you have not experienced the same thing, just let me know in the comments. And if you have ran into the same issues, please write about it down below as well. So with that being said, let's jump to the first hardship, which is the myth of effortless automation. So when a company encounters RPA for the first time, they understand that it is a non-invasive technology that basically can sit on top of any system that you have, read and understand the screen of any web application or desktop application and do the human interaction instead of the human themselves. Once you have that understanding, plus the fact that they can see proof of concepts of any process in literally a matter of days, they think that any type of project can be achieved in a couple of weeks, and even if it's so complex, can be achieved in a matter of a month or so. I think this is the single biggest reason why RPA initiatives fail in the first place. Because when you think like this, you think that you don't need enough teams inside of the company to be aware of the RPA initiative and it's still going to work. But this can't be further from the truth. Because once you start your RPA journey for the first time, you need to have IT people on board, you need to have subject matter experts, SMEs on board as well. And you need to basically show the people what are the type of projects that are best to automate in the first place. So there are so many methods and matrices and so many other things to show what are the type of processes that should be prioritized that at first companies should not approach RPA as some kind of effortless automation initiative. It is still a valid project that should have all the attention in the world. Otherwise, it's simply not going to work. So the second recurring theme that I have noticed during my time at companies is basically the set it and forget it idea. Because there is this common belief that robots do not do any errors and they do the exact clicks and types that you tell them that this will lead to a robot being 100% accurate. This is a box that I wish no consultant put themselves into ever again. Because while the robots, generally speaking, do not fail, the systems that you're working on sometimes fail. You can have a pop-up that you have never seen before. You can have the browser basically closing for no reason. I mean, heck, you can have the operating system shut down on its own. So once you give this impression that it will never fail, People think that robots are a bulletproof way to basically make all of their issues go away. And they think that maintenance is not important. Therefore, any issue that happens with the robot will basically fall on the developer that have created it. This is why companies should understand that there is no 100% accuracy. And a lot of times these errors come from humans themselves because the input is not formatted the way that the robot is expecting it or because of other configurations that has been done to the system that will basically not give the robot access to perform the actions that it was set to perform. So the idea is that do not put yourself in a box. There is no 100% success rate in any type of RPA process unless the robot is literally doing two clicks. So the last point and probably the most important for RPA developers has nothing to do with companies or actual work. It has to do with the continuous learning curve. So keep it up with RPA advancements between the years of 2020 and 2022 was already hard enough. Today, we have a totally different beast, which is called AI. I mean, you see AI writing code and you wonder if it can also create a process inside of UiPath Studio or Power Automate Desktop. Because today we have autopilot for Studio Web that can generate a process from a prompt and we also have Copilot for Power Automate that can generate processes as well. But we still don't have them for the desktop versions of these applications. And I'm focusing on UiPath and Power Automate because these are the tools that I use the most in my daily work. So this idea that you will have an AI that can basically take a PDD and create a process from it is a very appealing idea for a lot of people because that will literally eliminate our work. So you ask yourself, can we have an AI that is basically that powerful? 
And I think this is a question that we cannot answer right away. I don't think there is a, a good enough AI that can understand the structure of a UiPath process to create it inside of XAML file that we can just integrate directly inside UiPath or do the same for Power Automate Desktop. But time will tell because these large language models are only getting better and they are impressing everyone with the fast-paced advancement that they have. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the new approach of automation that has been made possible using GPT-4V or Gemini ProVision. And this idea is based on the fact that these models can understand the screen, they understand the layout, and these models can give that classification to uh, Python libraries like Puppeteer or Playwright. And then we can use these libraries that we already use for testing and do the human action that is needed to achieve the process that we have described in our prompt to the generative AI. And I have been covering this in my latest videos, so you can go back and watch them because it's a very interesting use case. It's not at the level of what we can create with RPA tools today, but I am not going to reiterate on the potential of these new AI models. So that is basically it. Thank you guys for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments. That's very important because I want to hear from RPA developers or business analysts or people that have already dealt with RPA in general and what they think about the hardship that I have just described. Is there something else to add? Again, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.